Hey, it's Sammy for another episode of the I Do Music podcast. And our goal and our mission is to empower and educate musicians and artists worldwide. And on today's episode, we're talking to DJ Monte of Oomp Camp Productions, discussing creating the smash hit Low with Flo Rida and T-Pain, how Oomp Camp impacted Atlanta's music industry and being a versatile DJ and producer. You are now tuned into the I Do Music podcast. It's your host, Sammy, and I am sitting down with Grammy Award winning producer, songwriter, DJ Monte. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I mean, we started off a little rocky because oh, yes. found out you <laughs> went to that school or whatever. The best school in the world. What? Yes. I don't know. Ma- yes. Benjamin Elijah Mays. No, no, no. We talking about Douglas. Frederick Douglas. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, Atlanta. We we share Atlanta, the West Side. All right. We, we can we can share that. Um being from Atlanta. Not many people are these days. A lot of people are, you know, transplants, even from the people that we talk to on the podcast. Uh Being from Atlanta, though, personally, what inspires you about the music here? We always been a different city just from the very beginning of music. Like we always we accepted all kind of music, floor music, East Coast music, West Coast music, and we do our own. So that's why I love about Atlanta. We never been just, you know, hey, nah, we don't listen to you and it's just Atlanta, just, you know, we accept all. Yeah, yeah. very accepting. Um, mm-hmm. how, let's, I guess, take it back to the beginning. Okay. How you got your start in the music business to begin with. I guess, well, I saw on an interview, a past interview, that you were exposed to the mixtape game early, mm-hmm. like in, middle school. In middle school, right. <laughs> Man, I always been, um, like, as a little kid, I always liked to listen to the DJs on V103. Like, V103 was the only station back then. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we had DJs, and I was just listening to it. And then, you know, somebody came and said, hey, listen to this tape. It was a DJ Jelly MC Assault. I think it was the first or second mixtape they ever made. Mm-hmm. And, man, I just fell in love. I was like, man, I got to do this. Yeah. I'm well, what was out. on that tape? You oh, man, I really don't remember. <laughs> I know it was a diss to another DJ. Oh, really? And another DJ coalition. Uh-huh. So, you know. It so was, it was it was the hype behind that. Yeah, too. Well, it wasn't that. It was just how they blended. I mm-hmm. never heard of that before. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I never heard uh, instrumental from one record bit put with an acapella or something else. You know, I just never heard the style of mixing from Jelly and MC Assault when they were doing it back then like that. So um, you actually began DJing early on as well. Right. I started with Jelly in high school. Oh, wow. at, at at the famous Douglas High School. Here you go. And, <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I started DJing in high school, and so you know, in my whole high school four years, everybody was like, "What you want to do? I want to DJ. I want to DJ." You know, folks laughed at me and stuff like that. So I, you know. But you made a career. Out of right, that. I made a career. I was going over to Jelly House. Like sometimes at school, my mom wouldn't let me go, and my homework wasn't done. So I'd be over there just learning how to blend two records and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know. early, tenth yeah. grade. Well, yeah, tenth grade. I just fell in love with music like in ninth, eighth grade. That's when mm-hmm. I got introduced to the mixtape. That's yeah. dope. Mm-hmm. And how can you 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 speak a lot about Jelly? Um, and I know you're a part of the Southern Style DJs, right? Um, how can you talk about how that I guess influenced your career and how it, it impacted your career rather um, as a DJ? As a DJ, it's always good. You can see a lot of DJs now have coalitions, mm-hmm. and we will one of the first coalitions to have like a Southern Style DJ. And it's always good to be with a bunch of people that have the same movement, the same motivation as you, and it helped impact my career because everybody was working towards the same thing. And one one person trying to do this thing. When we were going somewhere, we were going the same direction. We weren't going different places, so it helped a whole lot because, you know, you got Jelly that was motivational. You had MC Assault that was motivational. You had Big Oomp that was motivational. Mm-hmm. And they kept me as a young dude you know, to keep going, to keep pushing, even though when it got, you know, hard, we were working all night and all that kind of stuff. And it also kept me from doing something bad, so. You, know. you eventually became a mixed DJ um, for radio, right? Right. I am still am. You oh. still are? Yes, but I'm But you start, like, is that where you started in terms of, like, after DJing gigs, I'm sure, mm-hmm. you became, like, a radio mix DJ for? Um, Actually, Hot 107. Well, it won 107.9, I think it was 97.5 uh-huh. or something like that. Um, they had a mix show weekend, 
They allowed me to be on for the weekend, you know, and I did. You did your thing? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was nervous because, and it was in late night, so people didn't really hear my mess up. I think I walked in with like two two crates of records for two hours, so I was, I know, you know I was a rookie then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't have enough records. And Jelly just made me put my own stuff together, but. Yeah. Yeah. I he figured it out. Yeah, he said, you don't want to talk about that. Nah, nah, nah <laughs> not that time. But, you know, um, I want to appreciate Greg Street because he. Gave me an opportunity of being on the radio with him in prime time hours after, you know, I start, you know, becoming DJ Monday. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. So aside from DJing though, like I think the biggest thing about your career is mm -hmm. um you as a producer. Yes. What what led you into going like going into production? And a lot of DJs do, um, or vice versa, like they produce and they DJ, DJ and produce. But a lot of DJs don't, so I always I'm always curious as to how you get into the production. Like, what was that for you? Um, well, to be honest with you, before I started DJing, I had a drum machine at the age of nine. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so that was like my first thing. But DJing, I just fell in love with it. And me as a person, I'm always like to elevate myself. I I don't want to just be stuck doing one thing or just stuck doing just uh, DJing a club every night and now every week. At one point, at a, at a time, I'm gonna want to just move on and do something else. So I was doing the, you know, the mixtape thing, but then I see in production, I'm like, man, that look fun too. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do everything. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's how I started working with uh, MC Assault and another one of our producers, Freddie B, over at you know at the Big On Records. Mm -hmm. That's when we started Big On Records, and then uh, we started actually coming here first. At Patchwork. Yeah, Kurt was. <laughs> They had us mixing. They mixed our records. We that's was what's the, up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's production just became second nature for yeah. me. Especially as being DJ. I get to see people rocking in the clubs. I'm like, man, I can make something like this. That can rock in the club, right. I feel yeah. it. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, records that always pops up um, in association in association, excuse me, with your name is uh, the one that really took off. Mm -hmm. Like, really, really, really took off is Low by right. uh, Flo Rida and T-Pain. Right. Take us back to creating that record and how it affected your career from there. Like, because that was a huge record. It yeah, stayed on it the charts for what ten weeks. Ten weeks, straight? yes. Yeah. Um. Did you think it was gonna be like that when you made it? I didn't even see that that oh. that beat. I made a bunch of beats. Okay. And, you know that one beat was just totally different from everything else, and I sent it to Mike Karen, which was uh, a and R at Atlantic Records. And just so happy he picked that beat. And it, it was actually for Paul Wall and Juvenile first. Really? Yeah, Paul Wall turned it down. He was like, I didn't want the record, so it was going to make them two pop. So I was like, all right, cool. So Mike Karen was like, I got another artist, you know, uh, Flo Rida. Mm -hmm. I was like, who in the hell is Flo Rida? I ain't, you know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. and, but then until when Mike Karen sent me that record when he was rapping, T Pain was already on it, but when he was rapping, I was like, "Oh man, this finna be out of here." I mm -hmm. just knew instantly it was out of here. Yeah, like just from hearing it. That's but I didn't know that beat was gonna do. Yeah, no was gonna do nah, numbers. None of it. <laughs> You're like, that's the one that you weren't checking for. You like out of all the beats. Yeah, I want. I, I was just like, okay, let me just. I'm making this because you know I play a little booty shake set in in the, in the clubs. You know, like I said, DJ inspired my production. So right. That's why. I, that's the only reason why I made that beat like that. That's funny. Talk about the follow up record after a big smash hit. Um, I think you saw that with Unks Walk It Out. Well, Unk Walk It Out is the one that set up me being able to hook up with Flo Rida. Unk Walk It Out was my first hit. Walk but, it. Well, I guess what what I was gonna say is that Walk It Out, and then after that, you you guys came out with Two Step. Cause like Walk It Out was just a huge record in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Two Step following right behind. Both able, uh, both records you were able to produce. So my question is like the follow up record, like after a smash hit, how important that is for not only for the artist but even for you, like having a really big hit to begin with. Um, it's it's very important to get that streak. You know what I'm saying? A lot of producers want that. They want hits after hits after hits. That's how you get them checks coming from years. That's you know, true. You still yeah. getting the checks? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm I'm so appreciative of that of that that one. I'm getting a lot of checks from that one record. So right. Because it's been a lot of movies, but you know that's what a lot of producers want: is just to strive to have hits after hits. Mm -hmm. And I'm still striving for that now. So it's it's, it's no stopping. 
Did you think it was difficult to come back with the two-step record, though, after Walk It Out? No, it was actually easy. I pulled up to the studio. I already had the beat and the hook ready for him. I really? was like, yeah. I was like, man, listen, I got it. I got it. He was like, all right, let me hear it. And he just did it. Do you, just... you think it's important as a producer to um, kind of already come with, like, a melody or a hook for the artist or for you as a producer? Well, as producers, man, uh, us producers I already kind of know what we want to hear on certain things but sometimes you know a lot of artists have their own style their own free you know way of expressing themselves on beats and so sometimes i uh, allow that kind of stuff because you know it, it might be something different from when i was here yeah and it still worked you know it still worked mm -hmm. so your your musical resume and production credits mm -hmm. show that you've worked with some really really big artists um obviously we talked about flow rider t-pain um uh, um, but there are many, many other artists you've worked with. Do you think that that's like a strategic thing for you? Because I just don't see any records that you've, or maybe they're just not something that you talk about, but like I don't see any records that just weren't smash it. Uh, I have some records that haven't been smash you know, it. Right. But they were some good records. Like I yeah. did some stuff with Ludacris. It wasn't no smash record, but it was a good record. Yeah. He shot a video for it, you know. And I did some stuff with Migos, which been on a mixtape. Trap House? Yeah. Was that Trap I forgot the name of the song, but I did something with them. <laughs> but it was on a mixtape. It yeah, wasn't yeah, never. Yeah. But you sometimes you hit and miss, which is every producer and every artist. You know, you just hit and miss. You just keep going though. Yeah, I think. Um, or I guess the question for me is that how can one identify a DJ Monte beat or production? Ah, <laughs> that tag don't count productions. You know, it's gonna be at the very beginning of well. I try to have it on there unless the artist take it off. Mm -hmm. But that's it. The own camp production gonna stick right there. Is there like a ter certain? Um, I don't have no sound way, no more. Sound? You uh -uh. don't have a sound no more. It's, it's not a sound no more because mm -hmm. if you listen to music, it's everybody had the same thing. Back then, you knew it was my eight oh eights and my my whatever sound it was, just because I like to have hard hearing eight oh eights. But now it's just you know every sound almost the same. Right. Mm hmm. So try you. You mentioned that you were trying to be more versatile, or mm -hmm. you always say you know say that outside of just Atlanta trap and hip hop. Right. Who are some artists that you are currently working with, or you would like to work with today that may not necessarily be from the South? Honestly, I would like to work with like Rihanna. You know, I love some Rihanna. Kate, yeah, some Katy Perry, or uh, some you know, uh, just work with Dr. Dre and just in the beats it making beats or something like that but mm -hmm. i would love to work with them and i'm currently working with our own artists big Corey, uh shante renee mm -hmm. uh jay tez and uh you know that's who i'm working with just building our own artists which we always been known for as big on records right and right that's what i've been known for mm -hmm. breaking new artists all the time so yeah mm -hmm. if what was that oh you you actually mentioned dr dre which made me think about this that's one of your inspirations, right? Right? Is yeah. that the reason why you got the the uh, beat machine? What did you say? You had a beat machine at nine? Yes. I, well, no, I had a beat machine at nine because I just wanted. You just to, wanted the beat machine. Yeah, I just <laughs> wanted the beat machine. I didn't. I never even heard of Dr. Dre back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, um, I just wanted one just to make some noise, and my mom had it. Had me a little guitar amp in my room. I think I kept up all night. But I'm sure you did. Yes, I did. I, <laughs> I had drum sets as a little kid. So, you yeah, know, it's just... It's it, always been in you. Especially making beats. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's always what, been. What are some, or who are some of your other influences aside from Dr. Dre? Um, you talked about, and then obviously like the Southern style DJs that you've worked with, I'm sure inspire you too. But who are some of your influences, even if it's artists or songs well i gotta say right now it's a it's a whole new thing my inspiration right now i, I want to say like a dj named tiesto mm -hmm. you know he's a edm dj mm -hmm. dj carnage um um it's still like scott storage and mm -hmm. people like that you know they are inspiration because they still yeah going but those are my inspirations i really don't have that many i'm my own inspiration I feel that. To keep pushing. I have four little kids. Oh. And they are my inspiration. So That's dope. Yeah. You talked about EDM, too. I mm -hmm. see you've done a lot of EDM mixes on your YouTube. Right. Um, when did you find an interest in EDM, and has it opened up a lot of doors for you as a DJ, even? Uh, I just like remixing. You know, that's just as a DJ. So mm -hmm. I figured, like, shoot, if I can remix my own records and produce it, then... I'll do it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what 
and it, it's no limit to that. You could do whatever, and it's just like it's just a you, you can know go like crazy on that kind of stuff. Little John kind of re uh, invent, not even reinvented himself, but he like went towards the whole EDM Rue Waka mm-hmm. um, touring in that scene in that space. So that's why I asked, like, is that something that interests you in terms it of? It interests me because mm-hmm. you know I. I just being in Atlanta, I hate the whole club scene. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I come from DJing where people like to party, dance all night. Now you got clubs where it's just a bunch of sections. And in that world, it's kind of like a free, it's just they love to party. Mm-hmm. And that's me as a DJ, that's inspiration, just to want to see people have fun because that's, that's my job. Right. You don't come hire me so people could just stand in sections and I see everybody popping. But that's not fun for me. That's right. not that's right. nowhere near fun. So that's the inspiration. I like to rock the crowd a little bit. I, I, I appreciate that. We, there are some people that still like to dance, I promise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you you work a lot, um, and it's obvious by your credentials, your credits. Mm-hmm. You even mentioned working six times a week in the studio, um, right. aside from just like your regular traveling gigs and, and being a, a, the other things that you have going on. Mm-hmm. How has that helped propel you forward as a Grammy Award winning producer? Um, well... Just me working, keep pushing hard. That's what I've been known for, you know, just like being with Sun and Style DJs and, um, you know, being with Big On Records. You know, that's what we do. We work 24-7, work all the time, and that's how you exceed. You know, we really just stop. You don't give an opportunity for somebody else to come in and do anything, you know, different. Like, you got to stay working. You got to stay. And that's what a lot of young, these young producers are doing now. They staying busy, they staying working, they stay putting out stuff, which that's something you have to do. That's part of your job, being a producer. You know what I'm saying? But and then traveling the world, I get to see different things. You know, that's inspired me to be like, hey man, I need to go in the studio and make this. Or I might make it in my hotel room. Mm-hmm. I might make it on a tour bus. I might make it on a plane. It don't matter. It's just, you know, I gotta stay working. I gotta stay my brain stay thinking of something all the time. I might be thinking of a beat, just talking to you. Right. I think of a beat in a car, you know, so I just stay I gotta stay moving. What what changes have you noticed um or for you personally in terms of like making actually producing mm-hmm. in terms of like technology like or is there something that you were using that you don't use anymore have you changed software? I was using um the MPC mm-hmm. I, I really love the software now because you know back then you had to rent or you had to buy so many different. Mo- yeah, mm-hmm. different modules and everything else like that so I really appreciate the time now especially when it comes to DJing you know, you can have thousands of records in you your computer. You ain't got to carry, carry out them crates. Mm-mm. You don't have to do anything like that. So, do you still like DJing with the records, though? I mean, everybody asks me, different? you know, yeah, you know, I'm, I came from a turntable era, mm-hmm. but for me to want to go back to carrying turntables <laughs> and carrying records, no, nah, I'm not missing that at all. Mm-hmm. I had a bad experience. I had a bad experience with. What happened? Just period. Just oh. doing all that. You gotta oh, have. Yeah. Trunks and then you know your rec your records Karen. might warp yeah mm-hmm. you know then even from the production side like having different modules you had to separate stuff you had to do eight ads and two inch reels and mm-hmm. all this kind of crap so you know I love the technology right now I feel it I yeah. feel it it makes life a little bit easier a lot easier <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know I'm not just I ain't gonna say I'm you know like a Beethoven on the keyboards, but it also helps you just you just click a lot of this stuff in. Too, yeah, so yeah. It helps your creativity just move on. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. You um um I talked about how you, how you work a lot, uh, right. but I guess I'm curious to know. And you just said that you have four children, four little children. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you find a balance in all that you do as a DJ or producer? Uh for me, it's kind of hard. It's like a sacrifice thing, you know. Right now, my children are so used to me being gone a lot. And so, you know, that's just my sacrifice for them. I was married at one point, and my wife didn't have to work. So it was me bringing home the bread just so everybody can eat. And, you know, for me, they just kind of like, okay, daddy working, which I'm glad they get to see that. But I'm missing a lot of time with them as well. So when I'm at home, I spend a lot of time with them. You know what I'm saying? So... That's it, really. I just, you just have to figure it out. Yeah, I had to figure it out, and that's the sacrifice that I had to just, you know, I'm doing this a lot for for them, and I want them to have a lot more when they grow up and get older. Right, but, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You have uh, been 
making trap beats since 97. Those are your words. Right. <laughs> you said, yup. Yes. Retweet. One, one of the pioneers <laughs> for this. Right. So yes. how have things changed in trap music and production since you started? It's really the same, it's to the be same. honest with you. It's just the technology give you a little edginess to it. But it's really the same. The only thing is... We didn't have the outlet back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody has the outlet. Everybody appreciated it. But back then, we had to fight to just to get on one radio station, mm. which they didn't want to play a lot of down south music. It was just a lot of East Coast and R&B stuff. So, right. you know, they back then, I wish, you know, they heard our sound back then because it's kind of a lot of the stuff that's going on now. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I, I guess, too being a radio or like a mix dj what's the mm-hmm. what are like the differences and how can you for those listening that are may have an interest in doing that mm-hmm. what's the difference in like djing you know at a party at a club to actually being a radio mix dj well a radio mix dj you kind of limit the records you know what i'm saying because a lot of records don't have clean versions right so that kind of just you know but it's still now What's getting played on the radio is getting played in the club. In the club. So everything have a clean version now. So mm-hmm. it's like it's it's pretty easy. Everything. Was how how did you or you said Greg gave you opportunity? Yeah, Greg gave me my first opportunity yeah, to yeah. just be on prime time hours with him. Like every what I think it was Tuesday and Thursday, I had to do like an hour mix with him. That's dope. Yeah, so they had to let me go because I wasn't signed actually on V one hundred three. Right. And Greg was like, man, you know, I'm just gonna bring you on. And he just did that for me and Big Oomp. So I was just appreciative of that's that. Dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's um, dope. Talk about, I guess, well, sampling. Uh, I don't do much of it. Okay. Uh, well, a Little Birdie wanted to know um, <laughs> about a sample that you may have used from a movie. Oh, uh, yeah. So. I did. I did sample <laughs> that. I did. Uh, Could you talk about that? <laughs> well, I was, um, it, like I said, the inspiration came from um, Lil Jon, the Throw It Up record with Pastor Troy. Mm-hmm. You know, he got he got that from Requiem of a Dream. And I seen Lil Jon, I said, oh, I know where you got that from. So then I was watching Saw. I said, oh, this kind of got like the same kind of feel. Uh-huh. So I just had to, you know, just try to see. But I got away with it. I really didn't have to get it cleared or nothing like that. So well, Talk about clearance. Clearance in general. Well, you say you don't sample much. Not much. But nah. in terms of clearance, if you could tell people what what that entails. Uh, clearance. Um, just had to get permission to use a sample from other people if you sample their music. And me, for me, I like my money. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to sp- spread the money like that. Not for no. You know, I just love my money. I don't want to sample nobody's stuff. Mm-hmm. Which I don't mind helping. Like, you know, it was a great record, but I'd rather for somebody to sample my stuff or my music back, you know. Has anybody sampled? Uh, oh. Yes, it has. I think um, somebody produced the record for Kid Ink. Really? They took one of, our, one of my old records from way back then, East Side, West Side, and they used the little loop that was at the beginning and did something for Kid Ink. That's dope. But other than that, nah. nah. A lot of people sample Walk It Out and a lot of uh, chant samples I be hearing in a lot of these records that came from us back then, but yeah. Dope, dope. Um, you did mention that you have your tag and people know it's... On Cap Productions. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I would ask you, do you feel like beat uh, tags on a beat are more important today than they were? Um, but, you know, with the, the state of, like, credits being so difficult to find, like, you can't find... You can't go on the back of a CD and find their, their credits anymore. Man, it's so important because it, it helps identify, you know... The beat and who made it, you know. Uh, LeJohn had his thing where he will be on the track with an artist, he'll be on there, so you kind of know that LeJohn probably done did it or did it, did it. He'll be on there, you know, doing his thing, or Jermaine or Dre, you could just always tell. And especially now in the day and time where it's like thousands of producers, you want to be. You want it to be known who made this beat, you right, know, who right. did this or who did that. So, yeah, it's very important. Did, speaking of Diddy, Diddy mm-hmm. tried to buy a beat from you one time. Yeah, I was in the club. <laughs> I was playing um, one of my records, uh, Burn It Down, and I was playing the instrumental. He was like, what is that? What is that? He was like, I was like, shit, it was a beat I made. You know, he was like, oh, man, I, I want to buy it right now. Right now, I was like, oh, you know, well, when I when I buy it, you know, when I deal with business, I deal with, you know, big on. I go through management. I said, man, I just can't sell it right now. Yeah, yeah. And you can call me tomorrow, and right, I, you right. know, we can discuss it. But he called Jesus in there. He was like, Jesus, you want this? 
I'm like, no, I'm like, dang, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, you're you my boy, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't do me like that. But it was cool, you know. I, I just couldn't sell it to him. It just off, off yeah, the yeah. yeah, it's just my lord to the big one. I'm not one of them people who say, yeah, give me the money right now. I just, I, we had to discuss it with everybody. What's the talk about uh, being loyal and and staying with? Because I mean, it's obvious that you have your own. You guys are doing your thing, Southern Style DJs, and also Big uh, Productions, right? Um, as a company, talk about being loyal. Because I mean, any other person may have very well just sold to be in that situation. Was what was your value to your relationship with Big? Uh, it just grew, man. You know. It, for me, loyalty is always important. You know what I'm saying? I don't get, I don't care what it is. Loyalty is always key. You gotta be loyal to something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's just me. They gave me my first opportunity. They gave me my first everything. So I feel like I I can't turn my back on no big oomph, no DJ Jelly and MC. So I just really can't do that because they they gave they paid the way for me and they supported my whole every step as me becoming a producer as a DJ and everything like that so I feel like it's old you know what I'm saying so I don't feel like nobody else deserved that loyalty from me I'm a very loyal person yeah and so that's that's the worst side in you yeah I, I give you uh-huh. that I give you that I don't know about that that's that dog high I don't know about that dog <laughs> but that's the worst side of you um I guess what what advice would you give up and coming producers today. Um, just from like what you've learned, and and even like I guess more so the relationships you've built interest mm-hmm. me, because like you said, you you have these relationships with the Southern Style DJs um, from the beginning, but also just the record with the two records with Unk that mm-hmm. shows that y'all you know y'all you did his whole tape for real or his whole album. His so, whole albums, yeah. yeah. So what what advice would you give up com- up and coming producers today, and then also like. What's the importance of building those relationships? Uh, for up and coming producers, man, keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? Just don't think that just this one beat gonna make or break you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If somebody don't like it, it's, it, it might not be for that person. It might be for the next person. Like I made uh, Shot a Little Foolish. I made that beat, sent it to everybody. Rick Ross was like, man, why I didn't get that? I said, man, I gave you the same CD I gave you Shot a Little. It's just Shot, it, Shot a Little fell in love with it. Right. So, you know, one beat might not be for a person. If somebody say, hey, I don't like this beat, it might be for the next person. It might be for somebody else. It might be, you just never know. You just got to keep going, keep making them, keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. And every beat might not be jamming. You just never know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just you just got to keep Try pushing. Try your luck. Yeah, keep, and get out and network. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Get out, meet the artists, be in their faces, you know, let them know that you're serious about your career. What, uh, how do you go about shopping your beats around now? Is it more so just, you, I mean, are you sending records? A lot of people are <laughs> leasing. That was a conversation we had the other day uh, that a lot of producers are leasing their beats now. Um, there's just other ways of doing it versus how it was back in the day. Yeah, see, I never knew how that worked. You know what I'm saying? Leasing and all that kind of stuff. So I've never been in it. I'd rather just... I have a lot of relationships with a lot of artists, you know, so I just call them personally and be like, hey, I got beats or whatever, you know, let's work. And, you know, I, I, I it's just connection thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do that lease and stuff. So. so are you, like, the type of producer that's involved in the entire song, like creating, like, a producer being involved from the beginning to the end of the record? Is that how so- you work? Uh, sometimes I just allow that creativity to be on that artist, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they'll do things that, like I said, when I made that one low beat, they like to step outside the box. So if I feel like, hey, man, this is not it, but for them, they might be like, it is, you right, know? Right. And so they believe in it, and it could be, you know what I'm saying? I could be wrong, so I don't never want to just shut that down unless we in there create the whole thing from start. Right. But if I have beats and they hear something... I don't want to sit here and say, nah, that's not what I was hearing for that beat. I was hearing this, you know. I don't want to just push them away from it. Yeah, so. limit that creativity. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what, where do you want to go from here at this point in your career? Like, you still just want to continue making beats or you have other Well, I want to continue outlets. making beats, and especially I got artists of my own that I'm working on. Who are and, your artists? Well, I have, uh, I'm doing something different, like mm-hmm. an R&B artist, Shantae Renee. And mm-hmm. uh, I got Big Cora, which he oh, produced. Yeah, he produces his own stuff and um, he rap over his stuff. But you know, it's a new generation, which is Oomp Son. He the one that said Oomp Camp Productions, as a matter of fact. Really? But, yeah, that's the, him. Yeah, that was that's him. That's funny. So, but yeah, I'm working with them, just trying to get them going. You know, give them the opportunities that I had. Mm-hmm. But for me, I would really 
want to be on the stage rocking like 150,000 people, you know, doing the EDM thing. Yeah. Before yeah. that, before they get oversaturated. So, you yeah, know, I just, it's happening. Yeah, it, it, it happens. But yeah, yeah I want to do something. I just want to take my career to a whole nother level. Some, I feel you. Somewhere, not just being right here. I like to keep, keep elevating. elevating. Yeah. yeah. What, um, try to take me back to a, a moment worth revisiting something that you just would never remember uh never forget it's almost like you knew this was the place you needed to be at that time whether it was producing a certain record working with a certain artist djing a, a party anything uh i'm gonna say it just recently it just happened like last year or something um of course i'm on the road with t-pain and we were down in miami we had a show uh, fam you I think and then next thing you know Flo Rida come out there oh, so really? yeah it was just a, a moment I ain't never seen or experienced I mean, mm -hmm. you know where all three people that had a big part of a record was on one stage together I was DJing for them and Flo Rida and Pain he was on the hook and I was just like dang you know and just seeing how everybody responded to the record right it, this, this is like Still. yeah this yeah. is last year like That's that crazy. record is like that was like nine years old then, you know what I'm saying? Now it's ten years, but that was just that's like a big record. yeah, that's that a, a big, big record. record, and that was just a moment for me right there, just period. Just I want to go back to the beginning of you know you said you saw the you were exposed to the mixtape game early. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what you or how do you feel about mixtapes today, especially with so many outlets for like streaming and things like that, where you can make money off of a lot, a lot of people stray away from mixtapes and they're trying to develop like actual project to sell. Mm -hmm. Or some people sell their mixtapes or whatever. What what do you how do you feel about the mixtapes today versus when you were first exposed to it in middle school? For me, as a DJ, I think mix mixtape, they just took the word and they don't understand the meaning. Mm -hmm. Mix is a mix. You know, it take two one record mixed with another. Not nobody rapping over some beats or songs. like to mm -hmm. me right now the mixtape games are albums. Everybody putting out their albums, they'll put out tons of, but it's just free. You know what I'm saying? So the mixtape game, I don't look at it as no mixtape. Even though it's a new word for it now. They call it mashups. But as far right, as right. yeah, for me, I don't think it's I don't call it mixtape. I just call it they album type thing. Even they though project. it's not an album. Yeah, they project, or whatever. You know, you can't come to me saying it's a mixtape. I done came from doing thousands of mixtapes. Like, actually staying up all night, mixing one record with another record. That's a mixtape for me. Yeah. What What would you tell 20-year-old DJ Monte, <laughs> knowing where you are today? I laugh because I know you heard that earlier. Where would I tell? What What would you tell 20-year-old 20, 20 DJ Monte, uh, knowing where, what, you are, what you are and where you are today? It's a lot. Um, Go just, for it. Hey, man, you know, not to be so wild. <laughs> you was wild oh, at 20? Yeah. What you was doing at 20? Everything, man. You know, I was I was exposed to a lot of things, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So being around a bunch of stuff and just, and then I got introduced to some money. I know I was having money, blowing it. And I just, especially I want to tell some of these young artists now from what I see on Instagram, how everybody buying thousands of chains, it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? I did some stupid stuff back then. I would have told the 20-year-old, hey, manage your money right. You know, do do the right things. And, you know, so I don't know. I would have told myself to slow down a bunch of ways, you know, and just enjoy life. Yeah. yeah. Talk about uh, even, like, handling your business because you said you, you was blowing money fast. But also, like, as a producer, mm -hmm. things you have to do in order to make money. What are those things like? Do you still operate with split sheets? Do you, is it just because you have, you know, a relationship with the artist that you may not necessarily do that? For artists that, I mean, for people out there, I know uh, people that I've spoken to who are like artists, a lot of times they might work with their friends mm. and don't see the significance in handling the business. So from your perspective, what do you think is best? Uh, split sheets are always good, but I think that comes at the end when them contracts and you know, but it, it's always good. It, but you in a time now where it's mixtape game or whatever, you know, where people just putting out records. And, you know, people might get a beat off of YouTube, you know, just rap over it and just put it out. So for me, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always like to do good business, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And people know. Me and Big On Records for doing a good business. So, 
I say split sheets and all that kind of stuff is just good. It's just, you know, we just handle the business. Mm -hmm. We know what it is when records are recorded. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing like shady or nothing like that. So True. You uh, also are, you have a lot of videos on YouTube of you DJing um, your mi mixes, your mm -hmm. mashups. Right. Um, you got you got caught on to the YouTube. Are you utilizing social media today the way you... Of course. You got to. Mm -hmm. It's too much of an outlet. You know what I'm saying? It, you got to be a fool not to. You're you know? utilizing it to do business? Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, you, and it's all branding yourself. You know, I wish I had this back 10 years ago. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? You, you get reached around the world yeah. just with a click of a button. But, yeah, you got to now. You know what I'm saying? That's the way of the world. You yeah. said branding. What's the what's the DJ Monte brand? Just letting people know I mix. I'm an actual DJ. You know what I'm saying? DJ and I actually produce. I tour. I do all this kind of stuff. It's a lot of people on Instagram saying they DJ, but you don't see no clubs they be at. You know <laughs> them. And for me, I just you know let you know I am DJ Monte. I have done this. I broke records. I I produce hits. I I'm on stage rocking with a major artist. So it's I am. That DJ Monte, and you're gonna know who I am. What's your favorite record that you've produced? Do you have it? Have one? Uh, not really. No. I don't know. I, it, I'll say low just because it made the most <laughs> the money. Check. Right. Yeah. Just the check. But as far as like my favorite one, um, I don't have one. I like them all. I mean, none of them just like my favorite, favorite. But, gotcha. Yeah, I like them all. And you you said who you would want to work with. You said Rihanna. Mm -hmm. Are there any independent artists aside from your artists that you look look to toward working with? Uh, if I come across them, I wouldn't mind because there's so many independent artists. I mm -hmm. just really, I, it'd be like, have you heard such and such? I'm like, who is this person? Have you? But you look them up, they have like millions, millions. of streams mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. So I don't know as far as independent right now. I have don't mind working on out my own independent artists, but other than that, um, how do you go about finding artists? People just bring send them to you. I be on YouTube, and Twitter a lot. You know, uh, sounds. You no, know, uh, SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, SoundCloud, Spotify. I be on all that, just looking, mm -hmm. just streaming, seeing what's going on, what people liking. And I don't be trying to reach out to them people, but I just you just want to see. Yeah, I just want to know what's going on. Yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I don't like as far as me being interested in working with them. I'm not like. Like that? No, nah, not the way I had the, to chase them down. The work got to come to you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's it. You know? what, uh, I wanted to ask you, because you, you're a Grammy Award winning. That's how I started this off, right. songwriter and producer. How did you feel when you heard that, like, nominated for a Grammy, winning a Grammy? Like, how did that make you feel? Just like having it, like, when it went number one, I just really didn't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. It was just like, wow. But I knew how I feel. When that check came in the mail, <laughs> when them checks came in the mail, I was like, oh. This would have been. Yeah, this would have felt like. But what did it say, number one? I, I really didn't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. Being nominated, I didn't understand what that was until. Did you go to the Grammys? Yeah, I was actually there with Florida. Um, it was boring. But it was. Yeah, it was so long, mm -hmm. probably. I don't, I don't like doing award shows, BET, none of this. Yeah. It's just boring. You know, everybody boos you, everybody somebody, so I don't, I don't, I'm not that type of person. But, I feel you. Yeah, I just never realized it until them checks came in the mail, and that's really just to be real. I feel you. Yeah. I mean, I would be the same way. Yeah. I understand that. As the years have gone by, a lot of documentaries, a lot of stories have come out uh, on different platforms about the history of Atlanta and its music scene, mm -hmm. um, but none of those documentaries and none of those stories really make mention of Big Oomp Records and what you guys have done for Atlanta and music in the South, period. Um, so I guess my question for you is, like, explain the impact of Big Oomp Records and what you guys have been doing for many, many years from the company itself to the, the record stores to production, everything. Okay. Well, from the beginning, we were the very first, I ain't going to say the very first independent, but we were like the main independent label. Um, we fought a lot of places just to get our music played um, in clubs. We had our own DJs, of course, so we broke our own records. But as far as the South movement, we always had some, we, we were the edgy down South Atlanta 
artists. You know, we had that kind of stuff. You just have everybody else that get more recognition because they went more mainstream. But we were the ones, like I say, the foot soldiers. We fought that. We fought and paved that way for everybody else to just, you know, um, to be able to enjoy this. Like we fought the club club owners to get us in the clubs. You know, as an independent label, we fought record label. I mean, not record labels. Uh, radio stations mm -hmm. because they never wanted to play our music because they say it was too too street, too mm -hmm. hood, too all this kind of stuff. So we just we kept pushing. We fought for that kind of stuff and um. For us not to get recognized, like a lot of big artists came to us wanting to sign with us because we were the only independent. We had six, we had like eight record stores as far as an independent record label. We had eight independent stores, mom and pop stores that were all successful. We had DJs, we had artists, we had everything. And we just never got that recognition of us starting it. Everybody know who we are. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know that from when they see that big old record jacket on everybody's back because we was in every club making sure that our music was getting played. We won't, we, you gonna play our records. You know what I'm saying? No matter who you are, you gonna play our records. We were independent label. You gonna know about big on records. We ain't had folks. Man, it just, it's just, it's so much, man, you know, that everybody get recognition for. And I don't, I just didn't see them having to fight the way we had to fight. Mm -hmm. We really had to fight just to get heard on V103, like that, like I said, they were on the station, and then you had hot. We had to fight our way onto the label, onto these stations at independent. Radio stations weren't supporting independent labels back then. We were the only independent. We had the marketing. When we throw parties, we'll paint the whole city with poster boards. We out hitting, we had a marketing team like no other, and but we were all together. Like I said, we all moved together. When things were finna happen, we all did it together. Mm -hmm. You no know, clubs. We go support Jelly. We in the club. Everybody in the club. We in the club. Jelly gonna play our records. You know what I'm saying? But as far as Atlanta, man, ain't nobody really just gave up. Cause we 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 really broke that 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 barrier of getting put on the radio. Mm -hmm. It's us, and then you got Lil John. You got you know a bunch of different people, but they didn't have to fight like how we had to fight. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Going back to actually the piece about you being loyal t to those that are around you, um, the relationships that you have. Uh, Kurt, Kurt always brings people on the podcast, or we always try to find people on the podcast that we genu genuinely respect, um, mm -hmm. that are good people. And it's, that's obvious, but I guess we want to know, what is it about the people that you work with at, you know, Big Oom, Jelly, all the people that you just recently named? Um What's the commonality between everybody that keeps y'all like holding each other down, being loyal to each other, and, and and not taking anybody else's money? You know, there was no no troubles within Big Oom Records. Well, it all started from our leader, which is Big Oom. You know what I'm saying? He's a person that wants everybody to eat. You know, that's just how he always been. He don't have to take your money. He don't have to steal your money. He don't have to. He got his own money. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like he want to see everybody else succeed. That's what that's what gets his enjoyment. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He just, he, he like to see everybody happy. He want to see, like if you was part of us, he want to see you rich. He want to see me rich. He don't want to see Kurt rich. He don't want to see, he want, that's 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 his thing. And being around Oomp and seeing Oomp for years, he always helped people. That's, that's how I always known him. People always come to him for help, and he's just not no person that just needs your money like that, you know. So that's one thing that I love about Oomp, and just that what made me stay so loyal to him because he never took anything from me, and he always just like, man, we all finna. He really don't have to do the music thing. He he never had to, you know what I'm saying? But he in it because there's a bunch of us, and he want everybody to succeed. And so that's what make me stay so loyal to him. I ain't never miss nothing. I'm, I'm all my money is there. Is is you work for it, you get it. That's real. Yeah, that's real. What's your I guess what's your role in in y'all's camp? Like aside from like what you do personally, because you said you sign an artist and everything. I guess mm -hmm. do you have like a particular position or you just? I play a lot of roles. I I, I wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I might be a role manager one day, a manager today, a. a, a um, Producer one day, a marketing person. You know, I just play a bunch of roles because that's how we always operate. Yeah, we always operate like that. So that's what's up. Yeah, I don't really just have one 
I might be the graphics guy one day. I might you be. You do graphics. <laughs> I do a little something, you know, just <laughs> just to get the job done. I you feel know what you. I'm saying? But I might. I, I don't. I wear a bunch of hats. I just don't wear one. So you um, mentioned that you uh, like to party mm -hmm. and you like to keep the club rocking, right? Right. right. Um, I guess my question for you is like partying today, like you said, already is very different. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when we have events or the events I go to, their DJs are not really DJing. They're kind of just playing records. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no change in, in, in the BPMs, no change in, in, in the, no transitions really. Right. It's just like record after record. Mm -hmm. I guess one. Do you notice this if you do go out? Do you notice this with uh, DJs that are are DJing today? And also, would you or do you do these? I know y'all don't. I know you don't. But I definitely don't. You know, when <laughs> like, I when I go DJ, I, I like to cater to women. You know what I'm saying? That's, thank you. We appreciate yes, it. Yes, I love to cater to women. Which you got? It, they outweighed by men, but I still like to cater to women. Women have fun. Dudes gonna have fun at the same time. Right. Right. And uh, two, I. I see DJs do that, but it's a lot of DJs that are here that came up from when they, they was coming to the club when I was DJing. Mm -hmm. So I hear kind of sort of some of my crates. So you got some DJs that just might hit a button here and hit, you know, and they all be the same type of songs. You might hear the record two or three times a night. Me personally, I try to keep from playing the record two or three times a night, unless it's just I played a little early and it's the prime right, time right, right. and it's a hot song. Right. But other than that, yeah, I see it. It's aggravating. I don't like it. I don't like all the talk. I, I mean, I talk, but it's just to hype people up. Everybody now sound like they're from New York. I just, I don't, you know, I don't really like. Yeah, I don't like clubbing. Period. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, you know, I come from DJing. I don't like clubbing. One for that reason. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to DJ. I don't know how to rock a party. Some DJs. I'm not speaking on DJs, but. They don't know how to, um, and, and two, it just ain't no clubs in here. It's like everybody standing around, you know, who can buy the most bottles. And I'm not finna show y'all I have money. I don't like to, you know, but I don't have no fun. Yeah, at the clubs, me either. Yeah, it, they ain't trying to move people to dance. They are not trying to do none of that kind of stuff. It just ain't no fun environment for me. I also feel like people are unmotivated to dance. Like, I, I, I think it, it is partly the DJing, but it's also partly the crowd and the space. I think you know, people too cool. Too cool, yeah. Everybody <laughs> yeah, too cool. You know cool. what I'm saying? I like, I like to see people have fun, man. Yeah, that, yeah. that that is like, man, that shit was lit. But now lit is like, everybody bought. We got bottles. Yeah, everybody had a bunch of bottles. And it's on Snapchat. Right, that's it. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. And that's another thing that keep people from partying. What? Phones. Phones, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't dance. They might dance for 30 seconds and stop and just see how it look. And I'll go <laughs> Caption <back>. it. <laughs> stop to see how it look again. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't no party no more. It's yeah, like, it, and that's why I was asking you about social media because, like, I see that you're very active, um, like, with YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff. And Twitter, you said you use. But in the same token, like, social media is good, mm -hmm. and, but in the same space, it's, it has its, its cons. Yeah, I think people don't enjoy life a lot. You know, I see, like, I almost hit somebody one time because they into their phone. They walking, just looking, and they not even knowing they finna cross the street. I just think the phone just done took over life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I like to share some of the, my stuff on social media, like certain things, but I just see, if you go on social media, you see people damn near the whole day. I don't do that. I don't spend that much time because that's not what my time need to be. You know what I'm saying? That's I, real. Yeah, I don't like. I I like to enjoy life. Yeah, What's, especially when I go out of town. Oh yeah. I don't have to show everybody I'm out of town. I might take one or two pictures, but other than that, I'm enjoying the scenery. You don't get to see that shit much. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I go into Canada. Think I'm gonna be on the phone showing y'all? Then look and see how. Man, I'm gonna miss my moment. <laughs> right. Trying to show y'all. I'm man. This is for me. Savor the moment. God. God. Set that for me. I'm gonna share a little bit of it, but then you know I'm I'm able to see this. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. You uh, can you leave us with just I guess um, your advice again to those who want to get into production that want to become a DJ, whether it's for radio and the clubs or whatever. What is some advice you would give young people listening? Well, this for everything from artist Artists. to producer to DJ. What you gonna do to stand out from somebody else? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the main thing. Like, for me, I always like to stand out. I don't want to be what everybody else 
I want to stand out. That's how you get recognized. You know true. what I'm saying? That's so true. the question is for that person, what you doing differently? What's going to be your thing? What's going to be like, hey, you standing out from artist to DJ to producer to whatever you come in this, into this business to do, into the entertainment business. What are you going to do to stand up? That's just period. Mm. That's real. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Look, uh, you can check in your Apple Watch. Nah. It's, <laughs> uh -uh, it's just a, a meeting I'm going to go to in a minute. Okay. okay. See you busy. I'm happy I could sit you down and, and talk to you, though. Uh, proud of everything that you guys continue to do with Big Old Records and Southern Style DJs. Still and we have strong. things to come. Like a you lot have of things, things to come. Yes. New, new artists. New artists, new everything. We doing a lot of different things right now. I don't want to say. You don't want to spoil it? No, I don't want to spoil it, but we are you know, opening up doing a whole lot of other things too, especially okay. films and yeah, I was Everything about to say, up. entertainment uh, is big here, aside right. from just the music scene. So we appreciate you for sitting, stopping by the ID Music Podcast. Can you tell them where they can follow you on social media? Uh, it's DJ Monte across the board. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. It's just DJ Monte, M-O-N-T-A-Y. Yes, dope. And That's my I website, www.djmonte.com. <laughs> <laughs> Humble plug. Hey, um, aside from you going to Doug, everything was real positive here. So yeah, it's still I positive. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be known. It's positive. I appreciate you so much. Um, and as always, you guys can follow me on social media at Sammy Approved. And thank y'all for tuning into the I Do Music Podcast. I'm tell you what the crazy part is. You know how Doug and Maze have their little thing, but we always love the Maze women. Don't you? Yes. I, I know. <laughs> oh Lord. I know. <laughs> thank you. All right. Sonic, so be